this video we're going to talk about the backup data that makes up the QuickTimes methods analysis here and also the QuickTimes estimating down here. Uh, we actually provide you with a PDF document that shows you all of the QuickTimes data we have in Timer Pro. So I can go to my library's documents and you go to Applied Computer Services and in here scroll down and look for the QT standard data manual here and open this up. It's a PDF document. I'll make it look 75%. It came originally from our business pro package, which we had many years ago in the early 2000s here. And if we go down to page number two here, we tell you how what we did here. So what we did was in developing the quick times, we reviewed the data sets that were provided by all the major predetermined time systems in the market to ensure that quick times offered equivalent and in most cases more coverage than all of these other systems combined. So you know there's a whole variety of different predetermined time systems in the market here. They're all basically doing the same thing. So if you reach for a pencil that's 18 inches away from you, they should all come up with roughly the same time. And that's what we found here, but the, everybody is pushing their own little way of doing it here. And we developed the QuickTimes uh, interface here uh, using pure MTM1, which was really the, uh, the, uh, the granddaddy of all the systems that are out here. So if we look at a particular pattern, let's say a look here, page 49 here. Here we get an example for getting a jumbled part here. And getting a jumbled part is made up of reaching to the part, picking up the part, and it's a complex grasp because it's jumbled, and then eventually you're going to release it. This is a very common technique in putting together standard data blocks, which is all this really is here. And you can see my reach is an R-C, but I've got zero time here. Now I'm working in a unit called TMU. There's more about this in a moment here, but zero time here. And then here's a G4B, that's a complex grasp, and here's a release here. This is what we call the constant part. If we remove the distance, it doesn't, the, the grasp and the release are going to give you a constant part of the motion sequence. And then you've got a series of distances here. And we chose one inch, two inches, six, 12, 18, and 24 inches here. And there are the different codes. And here are the variable values. So the variable is the distance. How far away is that pencil from you? So what you end up with is a constant TMU, the 11.1 that you see here. The variable TMU that reflects the different distances, one inches, two inches, and so forth. And obviously add these two together, you get a total time. And we round them to the nearest TMU here. Then since most people don't know what TMU is, we show the values in minutes and seconds. Now there actually is 100,000 TMUs in an hour. So there's 1,666.7 TMUs in a minute. And so we equate everything back to a particular value over here. And in this example here, you can see my getting a jumbled object is GJ getting jumbled 18. And that my time for that is 1.08 seconds. Now, if I was to go and bring up a quick times sheet here, so here I am in the line balancing, I hit the right button. I'm going to go to my quick times here and I'm going to double click and I'm going to make a selection, get a jumbled object 18 inches away, 1.08. That 1.08 seconds is the value that you see over here, right there, 1.08 seconds. So you can see what we're doing. We're actually, if I bring this over, you can see them side by side here. So here you see the values here, 1.08 seconds here. And over here, push a little bit further here, you can see the 1.808 seconds being pulled right there, okay? So every value that we select as we move around our quick times inside Timer Pro is calling up one of these fully backed up data elements in the data manual.